Well, hey there, guys, and welcome back. On this week's show, we're going to be doing some resin casting. Well, two weeks ago on the show, I demonstrated for you guys how to take a paint tank and convert it into a pressure pot for resin casting. Last week on the show, I cast two clear jig knobs, one outside of that pressure tank and one inside, and showed you the difference between those. And this week on the show, we're going to put all that we've learned together to make a fun little project. And you know what? It all starts off over at the bench. Well, my youngest daughter just got back from a mini vacation in Florida and she brought me back this cute little shell. And as much as I like this little shell, I thought I'm a little worried about losing it or having it get broken over the years and that sort of thing. So we're going to try to cast that into a decorative little, uh, I guess we'll call it a Florida souvenir. As well, she gave me this, it's actually hers, but she gave it to me and asked if there's any way that I could turn this into a pendant. And we're gonna start off by using uh, resins to fill the inside to give this a little more strength. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to figure out how it is that we're going to mount these or what kind of a mold we're gonna use for casting them. Well, for the little shell that she brought me, I have an idea where I want to do a two-part casting. And for that, in the bottom of our casting, it'll be a cylinder. I want a little bit of blue resin. Once that blue resin has dried completely, I want to somehow, I haven't figured out how, but I want to glue that little shell. I, okay. Well, the shell looks better than this. There we, there we go. Glue the little shell. We're going to glue this little shell to this blue resin, and then we're going to pour clear resin over top of it and completely submerge it in the clear resin. Then we're going to take that to the lathe, and we're going to spin it so that it's perfectly cylindrical, and we're going to round off the top so it almost ends up to be like a shell under glass. And from there, I think I would like to turn some kind of decorative wooden base for it to sit on. So it ends up kind of being a small little paperweight for my desk, something that I can look at and enjoy without having to worry about losing or breaking the shell. Obviously, considering the size of the shell, this is gonna be a very small little project, but that's okay. As for this one, for the pendant, I think what I'm gonna do for this is when I have the blue resin mixed, I'm gonna flip this over, we're gonna sit the shell so that it's perfectly level, and I'm gonna very carefully pour resin into the recess of this shell. I'm gonna use the blue to give it some color, and um, well, you know what? Then we'll let them dry and see how we make out from there. So let's get ourselves something to cast this shell in. Well, the first thing that I need to do is make some kind of mold for my shell, the little one, to sit upright in. And all I'm going to use is a three ounce plastic cup, and I'm going to coat the whole inside of the cup with this stuff, wax the lid which is basically, well, it's wax, but it's used as a glue release. Now, I have never used this for casting. I don't know how it's gonna turn out, but hopefully it'll be fine. The point is here is that we're gonna coat the entire inside of our cup with wax lit, and then I am going to use a hot glue gun and glue it down to our UHMW plastic being sure to seal all the way around so that it's really glued on there well. Once that is done, I just want to take a knife and cut the top off of our cup and then get in there with a cotton swab and coat the whole bottom of our UHMW plastic with some of the wax lid. Once that is done, we are basically ready to pour. 
at least for that show. Well, there's just one last thing to do with this mold, and that is to decide how deep we want our dyed resin. Uh, where will our shell sit in all of this? And I'm thinking that looks good right about, yeah, right about there. I like it to be sitting right on the resin right there, and then the clear resin from there up. So all I'm gonna do is hold it in place where I like it. I'm going to take a marker and I am just going to, there we go. We're just going to make a little mark on the side. No, that is not a seagull. <laughs> that is my mark to tell me or to show me when to stop pouring the blue resin. Oh, blue. That's the color I'm going to dye it, blue. So that is the mark, and I'm hoping that I'll be able to see through the cup enough to tell when to stop pouring. If not, I'll blast a flashlight from behind and I'll be able to see just fine at that point. So that is this mold here ready to go. Now, what are we going to do about this project here that my daughter wants turned into a pendant? Well. As I said, we're going to use the same dyed resin that we're going to use in this mold, just for simplicity's sake, but we need a way to keep this shell level because we don't want it to only half fill or to run out the one end. We want to be able to fill that shell as much as we can with the resin so that we get a nice flat surface across the back concave section. So. Let me show you what I'm thinking of doing for that. Well, in order to keep this shell level, I, I need to find a way to hold it in place. So for starters, I'm just gonna use a little piece of painter's tape and I'm gonna fold it over on itself like this so that the sticky side is all the way out. I'm gonna stick the shell to that and then I'm going to stick it into this hole. Now, what is this hole? This hole happens to be just a one and three quarter inch diameter Forstner bit hole that I've drilled in a scrap block of plywood, half inch plywood. So this is making this stick up just a little bit, but the object here is to keep it from moving when I pour the resin. So you may be wondering, how is it going to stay level for that? I'm going to add some sand in all around the shell. I'm gonna try not to get it in the shell. I'll brush that out after. And I'm just gonna introduce sand all the way around to give it support on all edges. Just like this. And then we'll push the shell down so that it's nice and flush there. Again, the important part is that it doesn't move when we're pouring it, and hopefully the sand underneath is gonna support it. So we're just gonna brush all this sand into the hole to get that shell completely supported, and then at that point, I think we're pretty much ready to mix our resin. Well, now we have to look at how to dye our resin. And for that, I'm gonna be using mica powder pigments. And I'll post a link to this in the description. This is basically just a sample pack I got of 24 different colors, just to try the different dyes and that sort of thing. And I'm not sure what it is that I want to, uh, to color here. I do know I want it blue. I just don't know what kind of blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pick out my color. Once I get my color, we are going to uh, mix up our resins, measure them carefully, mix them up well, add our color and stir it through. And then we're going to pour into our molds and then get them into the pressure pot so that we can uh, get them curing. Ugh. 
That looks pretty good right there. Now we're going to introduce the pigment. And I've never used this pigment, so I don't know how much to add. I don't know what would be an appropriate amount. So let's try... Let's go with a little goes a long way, shall we? So we'll just put a little bit in there and give her a mix and just see what we end up with. Wow, a little does go a long way. All right. Wow, that's really cool. I like that. Okay, so now that we have that mixed in, we will start off by pouring it into the shell for starters. Because I think that one's going to be the most tedious one. So let's try that one first. I just want to be very careful here because I don't want to overfill it. I'm carefully watching as to where the resin is flowing to make sure that it's flowing in the right directions. I'm just going to gently persuade that around. And you know what? I think that's all I want to do for that. So I'm going to take this over to the pressure pot in just a second. I'm just going to put this off to the side and we're going to pour our next mold. We're just going to dump it in, hopefully being able to see how much is going in there. Oh yeah, I can see it. No problem. So we'll pour it up to our seagull line. <laughs> and that is it for that. All right, so now what? Now let's get this stuff to the pressure pot. Just put our shell down there. Like that. Well, I guess the big question is, <laughs> what do we do now? Well, now we do absolutely nothing. We wait. Uh, it's going to take some time for that resin to cure in the pressure pot. So for now, we're just going to leave it. That's the problem with pouring resins is you got to be a little patient. So I'm going to leave it. And uh, when I come back and see you after those resins are dry, we will move on to the next step. And now that the blue resin is dry, I'm going to use E6000 to apply the bale to the resin side of our shell. Um, you can get this stuff in most big box stores, craft stores, and it's perfect for this application. I have a little bale here. You can see it's got a little heart on the bottom and the loop at the top for the chain. And on the back, this flat waffled section here is perfect for holding adhesive and it should stick perfectly to the resin. I don't just want to squirt it directly onto the bale. So in this uh, instance, I'm going to squirt some down on a piece of paper and then use a toothpick to apply it to the bale. This stuff is a little stringy, so you want to get a little bit on the toothpick and then kind of swirl it around to sort of lose the string or, or wrap the stringiness of it around the toothpick. And that way you can get just the perfect amount applied to the middle of the bale. And uh, you just want to be careful here of squeeze out when you're applying it to the back of the shell. So we'll just reach over here and place it down, center it as best as you can. And once this entire thing is centered, just give it a chance to set up. After that, of course, you can take it over and give it a quick little buffing with some wax. And uh, I, I don't know, but I, I think this pendant turned out great and, and hopefully my daughter will, will like it as well. 
Well, now that we have our little pendant made, we can turn our attention to the second stage of the casting for our other shell uh, paperweight or whatever it is that we want to call it. Well, in the interest of saving time, what I've done is I've created kind of a cardboard stand to hold my shell upright. It's completely temporary and the reason it was put in there was so that I could glue my shell in. Now all I did was make this little support and then put a tiny little bit of, actually for this I used Gorilla, Glear, uh, Gr Gorilla Glue Clear, um, although you could use E6000 or you know whatever clear adhesive you have and I have glued this shell upright onto our blue casting. So let me just carefully cut this out of here and then I'll show you what we've got inside this mold. So I've removed my little support and you can see here, this is where the shell was taped. It's just a little half circle. See that? It's made out of cardboard. I've cut this section here away just so that no glue would stick down here. It would strictly be the shell. And then I very carefully taped it in place, making sure that it would be able to be removed. And I don't know if you can see it, but inside there now we have our shell glued perfectly upright in the middle of our blue casting. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a batch of clear resin and we're going to fill the rest of this mold, get it inside the pressure pot and let it cure. And we're just gonna pour this slowly in behind the shell because we wanna try to get rid of some of those air bubbles that uh, may be caused in behind the shell. So we're gonna give this a very careful pour. Just slowly letting the resin fill in all of the voids. And once we're happy with that and get our shell completely covered, we will take this over, put it in the pressure pot, and we will let this cure. So into the pressure pot the casting goes. Get this lid put on here. And we will bring this up to pressure. And with the pot pressurized at 45 PSI, there's really not much for us to do now other than wait. So I'll see you guys when the casting is dry. And unfortunately, that's all the time that we have for this week. Um, there's a lot more to do on this project. And while I could make the show longer, I really didn't want to rush this next process because it's one of the most important ones. So guys, if you haven't already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Click the bell so that you don't miss the notifications of future episodes of the show. When you join me next week, and I hope you're going to join me next week, we're going to start working on the refining of this cast project. And guys, I honestly hope you're going to join me for that when I bring you yet another Alternative Tuesdays. I had to think about that one. See you next week.